What's up, everybody? It's Jordan, and welcome to the Sports Dude Hind Show. Today is September 1st, 2021. This video, I want to be continuing my series and doing some record predictions for each NFL team. I uh, recently finished one of doing the Miami Dolphins, and this is of the Minnesota Vikings. If you've seen my videos before, you know that the Vikings are one of my favorite teams heading into the regular season. They had a terrific um, offseason. They had a really, really, really nice draft. And honestly, despite not being, you know, a playoff team last year, they were the they were one of the more underrated teams last season. I cannot wait to watch them play this year. And uh, you know, as much as they're, you know, one of my favorite teams to watch this upcoming season, they actually played my favorite team week one in the Cincinnati Bengals. We'll go ahead and get started. You know, they go on the road to take on Cincinnati. This is going to be a fantastic game. You know, some of the um, additions uh, from the Vikings. They actually bring back slot corner um, McKenzie Alexander. They lost him uh, last year to the Cincinnati Bengals in free agency. They signed him back on a one-year deal. And they also lost, you know, Trey Wayne's and last uh, offseason's free agency to the Bengals. And to get their replacement, they signed Patrick Peterson, the former Arizona Cardinal Pro Bowler, uh, to a one-year deal. You know, Mike Zimmer, he was a former defense coordinator for the Bengals. You know, the Vikings... Last season, if they would have had a normal Mike Zimmer defense, I think this team definitely, 100%, honestly, would have been a playoff team, in my opinion. And their deep, their offense was just very, very good. You know, Kirk Cousins threw for over 4,000 yards, over 30 passing touchdowns. Justin Jefferson statistically was the best rookie receiver I've ever seen. Dalvin Cook averaged nearly 140 yards a game. Adam Thielen had over 10 receiving touchdowns. So this is going to be a great game, seeing these two offenses. Uh, Cousins, you know, with Jefferson, Thielen, and Cook. And then you look at Burrow with Mixon, Boyd, Higgins, and Chase. I'm going to have the Vikings win this one. And I know some of my Bengals listeners won't like this. But I just think the Vikings are more experienced. And, you know, you don't know how Burrow is going to come back. I don't think Burrow is going to play great like people think uh, week one. So I'm going to have the Vikings uh, get the victory here against Cincinnati in week one. We two to go on the road to take on the Arizona and the Cardinals. The Cardinals are one of the most inconsistent teams in the NFL for the past couple of years. I mean, they can beat one of the better teams in the league, like the uh, Seahawks, and they can lose to a team like the Lions or the Texans. You don't know what you're going to get when you play the Cardinals. But this is very interesting. I mentioned Patrick Peterson. This is his uh, revenge game against Arizona. I have the Vikings winning this game here. I wouldn't be surprised if this was, if this was high scoring. Um... I'm going to see Minnesota getting victory here in Week 2 to improve to 2-0. Improve to week 3, they host the Seattle Seahawks. And you know the one thing, the one downfall with the Vikings, in my opinion, and the major question mark is Kirk Cousins, that he really has the pieces around him, and I feel like this defense is much improved. I already mentioned you know, Patrick Peterson. McKenzie Alexander's back. Uh, they drafted Chas Tourette, a linebacker from UNC. I really like a lot. Patrick Jones. He was probably my favorite defensive player in the draft this season, an edge rusher from Pittsburgh. They had some really nice talent in the draft, and even on offense as well, getting you know offense tackle Christian Darisol. Uh, you know they lost Riley Reef um, in the offseason to Cincinnati as well, and they also drafted White Davis to guard from Ohio State. But the one thing with the Minnesota Vikings that concerns me is Kirk Cousins' consistency. Uh, last season, I thought he was consistent. And if it wasn't for that horrific defense in Minnesota, the Vikings would have been phenomenal. But now, you know, we, we kind of got to see if Cousins can have uh, success in multiple years. You know, he's been successful at times, but his consistency to me is a major question mark. And I had them losing to Seattle. I don't think Seattle's going to be quite as good this season. But this is always a very, very tough, tough game when you're playing, you know, Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks. I have the Vikings losing here in Week 3 to drop to... Two and one. Week four, they host the Cleveland Browns, and the Browns, to me, um, I honestly, I think right now they might be uh, front runners to represent the AFC in the Super Bowl. It's crazy. Never thought I would say that, but I mean, they have the best roster in the NFL aside from the Buccaneers. I think it'll just be very hard for the Vikings to keep up with Cleveland. In this one, they dropped to two and two on the year after this loss to the Browns. Week five. They host the Minnesota Vikings. Oh, excuse me. They host the Detroit Lions. I have them getting a win here. I think this will be pretty easy. 
Uh, the Lions have a really nice offensive line, one of the more underrated offensive lines in the NFL. They have a nice running back in DeAndre Swift. But you, Jared Goff, to me, you know, he's he's not really going to cut it for Detroit. Um, I think Mike Zimmer in Minnesota's defense is going to have so much fun, uh, you know, playing against the Lions' defense uh, offense in this game. Um, I have the Vikings winning this one pretty big against Detroit. Week six in Carolina, my two teams I'm probably mo- uh, high on the most compared to the other people, the Vikings and the Panthers. This game's a toss-up and go either way. Wouldn't be surprised if the Panthers won this game. You know, they had a terrific a terrific offseason. I think they're going to be really good this year. I'm, I'm very, very excited to watch this game. But I have the Vikings one here because they're the more proven team. They're more experienced. You could see him, Darnold. He's not really had much success. You know, Terrace Marshall Jr., a nice receiver coming in from the draft uh, for Carolina. He's a rookie, so he's never played a snap. You look at some of these other guys as well. You know, they don't have a whole ton of experience with their group in Carolina. They have a brand-new quarterback coming in, as opposed to Cousins, who's been in Minnesota for multiple years. I think the, um, you know, experience from Minnesota really helped this game here uh, against Carolina. And with this win, they improved to 4-2. and two. Week 7 is their bye week, so heading into the bye week, they're 4-2. Uh, pretty good, in my opinion. Um, I know some people, some people might not think this, uh, but I, I'm really, really high in Minnesota this year. Week 8, they host the Cowboys. I had lose in this game. Uh, you know, despite me thinking they're going to be pretty good, they're still going to have those games where, you know, they're going to play a tough competition and they end up losing. I think I'm really high on the Cowboys as well. I think, you know, Zimmer's defense is going to be very much improved, but I think this Dallas offense might be a little uh, too good to handle for Zimmer's defense. So I had them losing here in week eight to drop to four and three. Week nine, I had them losing against the Baltimore Ravens, but this is a toss up because, I mean, you stop to run against Baltimore, 95% chance you're going to win. And you, you look at, you know, the Minnesota Vikings defense. It was horrible last year. But in my opinion, Mike Zimmer is one of the best defensive minor coaches in the NFL. And, you know, he knows what to expect when you play a guy like Lamar Jackson and when you play a offense like the Baltimore Ravens. I think the Vikings are capable of beating the Baltimore Ravens here. But this game being a Baltimore, I think, you know, kind of shifts it more towards the Ravens uh, winning this game. Wouldn't it be shot the Vikings and maybe pull off an upset? But uh, I'm going to have the Ravens winning this one. And Minnesota drops to 4-4 four and four on the season. Week 10 at the LA Chargers. This is another toss-up, in my opinion. The Chargers, I think, are going to be one of the more uh, surprising teams this season. Wouldn't it be shot that they had uh, 10 wins or maybe even more? Justin Herbert, you know, he was the best rookie quarterback we've ever seen last year. Very, very, very much improved offensive line compared to last season. They have Austin Eckler coming back from injury. They have some nice weapons on offense, and their defense is pretty solid as well. And then you look at Minnesota. You know, I, I feel like, I mean, this really, really could go either way. They both have great offenses and good defenses. But um, I feel like Zimmer's defense is going to give Her- Herbert a hard time, kind of like how last year. Uh, when the New England Patriots took on the Chargers and they beat them 45 to nothing. I'm not saying this is going to be a similar score at all, but I think Zimmer's defense will give uh, Herbert a hard time and it'll be enough to help Minnesota pull off a victory here in Week 10. Week 11, the host of Green Bay Packers. I am not high on the Packers like most people. I don't understand the hype. It makes absolutely zero sense. Aaron Rodgers was the best quarterback in the NFL last season. That's why he won the MVP. He was absolutely phenomenal. But they really did not improve. Like people think they did. It was Corey Lindsley, in my opinion, you know, actually to the Chargers. And I think that's one of the worst um, you know, departures in the NFL offseason. I think that's really going to hurt Green Bay. And, you know, as good as Rodgers is, I just don't see him duplicating a season like he did last year. And um, if anybody can stop Rodgers, in my opinion, in the NFC, when it comes to you know him not playing great, I think it's the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and I think it's the Vikings. I'm not saying the Vikings are the third best team in the NFC. I'm saying with their defense, I think they're capable of stopping Aaron Rodgers because we've seen that uh, multiple times where Zimmer's defense has really stepped up and able to contain Aaron Rodgers. Uh, I like this one here against Minnesota, um, a home victory against the Green Bay Packers. 
Week 12 at the San Francisco 49ers. I would say at this point, Trey Lance would be the starter. Uh, I, I would I feel pretty confident saying that. And to me, if you're the Vikings, you would much rather see Jimmy Garoppolo starting than Trey Lance because with Garoppolo, you know what you're going to get. Pretty much game management. Uh, you know, nothing great, nothing horrible. But with Trey Lance, you don't know his tendencies. You don't know his potential. And he's much more harder to scout against because we haven't really seen him play many games. You know, he was phenomenal in North Dakota State, but throughout his entire career in North Dakota State, I only believe he only started 13 or 14 games. Uh, not much for a guy who was a third pick overall. But um, I had the Vikings win here because not for sure knowing who the quarterback is for San Francisco. And I feel like, you know, Trey Lance, I think, has potential to be pretty good for San Francisco. But it's another one of the situations where he's a young quarterback, he's a rookie, Zimmer's defense, you know, with all the guys they got there, I think it's going to give them a hard time. And Minnesota gets the victory here to improve to 7-4. and four. Week 13 at Detroit. Um, I know I've had the Vikings, you know, have some really nice wins. And losing at the Detroit Lions might not make a lot of sense. And I would understand if you might think that. But you have to look at the Vikings and the fact, as much as I'm high on them, every single team in the NFL has that one game where they absolutely should not lose and they somehow end up losing. And, you know, Kirk Cousins at times is very inconsistent. For example, look at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers last season. They ended up losing to the Chicago Bears on primetime football. Looking back, there was no reason the Buccaneers should have lost that game against the Bears. That, that should have never happened in the first place. I feel like this could be one of those similar uh, situations where Minnesota maybe, you know, it just doesn't, you know, a trap game maybe because, you know, the following week is Pittsburgh. I don't think Pittsburgh is going to be tough like people think. But, you know, the Pittsburgh has a phenomenal defense, and the Pittsburgh Steelers are not an easy team to beat. Maybe this is a trap game for the Minnesota Vikings. I, I just think they're, they're going to lose here because every single team has that one game where they should not lose and they end up losing. So with this loss, they drop to 7-5. and five. Week 14, like I said, they host Pittsburgh. I have them winning this game. This is going to be very, very, very low scoring in my opinion. Steelers, I mean, they have a top five, top ten defense every single year. The Vikings, I think, are capable of having a top ten defense. Don't be surprised if this game has, let's say, 30 total points or something like that. Expect this to be a low-scoring game. Uh, if you like defensive football and if you're an old-school guy, this is a game for you. Uh, but I had the Vikings win here because I trust them more. You know, in offense, the Steelers' offense is a major question mark. Most of their starters on the offensive line are new starters compared to last season. And with this victory here for Minnesota, they improved to 8-5. and five. Week 15 at Chicago, I had them getting a win here. You know, Justin Fields will be starting at this point, obviously. And it's kind of like I said earlier with Trey Lance. Uh, personally, I think Trey Lance has more potential than Justin Fields. And if either one of those rookie quarterbacks were to beat Minnesota, I feel much more comfortable that it would be Trey Lance because he has so much more weapons around him and talent compared to Justin Fields, who does not have nearly as much talent as some of these other rookie quarterbacks have on their rosters. Uh, I really feel like Zimmer's defense, you know, all these guys like Patrick Peterson and Mackenzie Alexander, you know, Patrick Jones, you know, these guys are really going to step up and uh, make a make a living off, you know, making Justin Fields have a horrible day um, in Week 15 in Chicago. Things will be a very, very long day for Chicago fans and an easy win for the Minnesota Vikings. Week 16 against the LA Rams. Very intriguing matchup. I think the Rams are honestly the biggest threat to the Buccaneers to re represent the NFC East. Uh, excuse me, the NFC. And, um, you know, the, the Vikings have experience playing Matthew Stafford. They've played against him for over a decade now. You know, Stafford was the quarterback with the Detroit Lions. So they know his tendencies. They know what he's going to do. But Matthew Stafford... You can make a case has never had this talented offense around him. I mean, you know, Megatron you know, had him years ago, but that was kind of towards the beginning of Stafford's career. And um, I think that the potential will be the close game. I, I fully expect the Rams to win this one, but don't be surprised if Minnesota makes this one close. With that loss there, they dropped to a 9-6. and six. 
at Green Bay, Week 17, I know I sound crazy, but um, I, I have the Vikings sweeping the Packers. I, I feel more comfortable, you know, with their roster. And, you know, you, you look at the Packers. They have a nice team. Obviously, Rodgers is arguably the best quarterback in the NFL. Aaron Jones is a top 10 running back. Devontae Adams is a top three, maybe top one, you know, wide receiver in the NFL today. Take away those three guys. They don't have, I mean, that weight of a roster at all. I trust the Vikings defense more than I do the Packers. But I, you know, I, I trust Aaron Rodgers far more than I do uh, Kirk Cousins. That's my only issue with the Vikings and Packers. Everything else, I'm, for the most part, going to take the Vikings here. You know, they have uh, Devontae Adams, like I mentioned, in Green Bay. But I feel like the Minnesota Vikings receiver core is a little bit better. You know, with Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen, they have more depth there. But like, Green Bay doesn't. I, I know it sounds crazy, but I really think Minnesota is capable of sweeping the Packers this season and possibly being in contention to win the NFC North this year. And to finish it off, a home game against the Chicago Bears in Week 18. They get a victory there. And the final game of the regular season, they, with that victory, they improved to 11-6. and six. Uh, I, I know I've said it multiple times. I am really high on the Minnesota Vikings. I think they have potential to win the NFC North. I would not be shocked at all if they won their division. I know that might sound a little crazy, but I, I think they are capable of doing it. They're going to be one of the most um, fun teams to watch, in my opinion, this year. Definitely a surprise team to keep an eye on. Um, I've been mentioning it for months. I think they will surprise the people definitely in the playoffs, in my opinion. And my ceiling for them is 12-5. and five. My four, floor for them is 8-9. and nine. So let me uh, let me know what you all think you know, in the comments. If you think this win total is too much or too low for the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, thank you all so much for listening. If you like this video and subscribe to the channel, I would really, really appreciate it, and I will see you all next time on the Sports 2 Hind Show.